away to Roker Park in the northeast, where football arguably means more to the fans than in any other part of the country for this momentous cup tie, Sunderland against Crystal Palace. A wonderful crowd of 50,000 then at Roker Park to greet Crystal Palace, who, if anything, I think, seem a little bit reluctant to come out. But a team has been drawn away in the last five rounds, and in the last two, they really have made a name for themselves. With that victory against Leeds United at Ellen Road, and another one against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. So this, then, is Crystal Palace. So now they face a side going well at the top of the second division, the fanatical crowd as well, just waiting now to greet their Sunderland heroes, a team unbeaten at home this season. The atmosphere absolutely magnificent, even without a few thousand Palace supporters held up by a train failure on the way from London. Some didn't get there until half-time. I just hope that they switched on in time for the programme today. The teams then, Sunderland, make a change where Dennis Longhorn comes in at number eight in place of Jackie Ashurst. Although the team change that got the biggest cheer was the announcement of Billy Hughes as substitute, the first time he's been in the squad since he broke a leg at Charlton in November. Now, as for the Crystal Palace side, one difficult decision for manager Malcolm Allison. In finding room for Phil Holder at four, he had to leave out Stuart Jump, who'd played so well in the previous round. Jump now named as substitute. When you think of Sunderland in the Cup, you think of Bobby Kerr here, the man who actually lifted it. You think of Jim Montgomery, whose brilliant goalkeeping at Wembley made it possible. Palace fans can already see Peter Taylor as a possible Wembley hero, and in their dreams they see their skipper, Ian Evans, carrying off that trophy. No doubt the referee, and a very good one today, Clive Thomas of Triorchi, will bring them all down to earth as the crowd now waits for the start of the cup time. So, Sunderland kickoff. Attacking the goal to our left, those red and white stripes, black shorts, against Crystal Palace in a change strip of all white, except for that diagonal stripe of red and blue. Perhaps the biggest challenge the Crystal Palace have faced in the cup so far, even remembering their victory at Leeds and their victory at Chelsea. Holder. Small man, but he got up for it, and uh, Whittle's not very big either. But they're getting it away as Whittle goes after, that's got to be a free kick. Uh, rather rash challenge there by Bobby Moncur, and uh, Whittle not happy with it. So a free kick to Palace. Ian Evans has come up for this one on the far side of the penalty area from that kick. Peter Taylor making a signal. Swindlehurst making a run now. Evans has made a run and a very late one as well. Might have caught them out, but it didn't. They got it away, Sunderland. And here's Taylor again. Back for Wall. Chipped in forward again. Whittles on side. Well, he couldn't quite put the finishing touch to it. And here's Bolton now for Sunderland. Oh, they let it go. And Kerr might come in. Oh, Hammond saved that well, and Evans just nicked it back to him. And they let Kerr through badly there, Crystal Palace. Really not decisive enough. I think it might have gone just wide, but Hammond nonetheless made a very good save. Sitting up there, still alone in that director's box, Malcolm Allison, with all the trains uh, from London up to this part of the world having some sort of trouble or other. So far, the Palace directors have not arrived. Moncur. Holden. And Longhorn playing it inside for Jeff Clark. Robson. Bolton, a good ball there, and Holden, oh, and that very nearly squeezed it. That looked for a moment as it uh, skidded across that Crystal Palace penalty area that it was going to go out of play, but the long legs of Holden just got it back, and Hammond saved. Middlehurst, Jeffries, Whittle, well he's difficult to shake off the ball when he's in the mood and he's in the mood at the moment, that's a good cross there and that caused Sunderland a good deal of trouble before it was cleared there and coming through again to Swindlehurst, good clearance there by uh, 
Jeff Clark. And the best move so far by Crystal Palace. A lovely little run there by Whittle. And a dangerous cross. Evans off balance. Jeffries. Holden. Got to get down again. Could be dangerous. Longhorn is there. Kerr is there. And somehow Hammond saved it again. Kerr back again. And Wall gets it away. Longhorn with the shot. Oh, and he hit the crossbar. Well, that was so lucky for Crystal Palace. Kerr seemed to have a shot that uh, looked goal-bound. Somehow Hammond saved that. Wall got the header away, and it came through to Longhorn, and he hit the angle of post and crossbar. Von Kerr getting it away. Wall again. Well, he did well. He stuck to it well there, Peter Wall. Found Whittle. Taylor playing it back for Jeffries. Off Robson, and it'll come for Kerr. Holder's challenge was pretty swift. And now, away goes Peter Taylor. So he's got the legs of Moncur. It's a corner. No, it's a goal kick. Peter Taylor can't believe that. I must say, from my perch up here, that looked a corner. Bolton. To Towers. Malone. Longhorn outside him. Dennis Longhorn with the left-footed cross. It's a good one too. Kerr with a shot and Hammond again with a save. And as it came across, there was definitely some pushing in that area. Nonetheless, Kerr got in his shot. And Hammond, who is having a good sound game, got in his save. Bolton's header to Robson. Towers. Touch on to Longhorn. Alone going on outside him. Holden. Towers. Alone. Good passing here by Sunderland. Robson. Stopped by Chatterton. That's a fair ball as well for Chatterton. Uh, from Chatterton now for Taylor. And that's a good cross too. And Swindlehurst is in there. Clark gets it away, but only as far as Wall. Played in quickly again towards Swindlehurst, but Montgomery's there. The Crystal Palace directors have arrived, and so there's a bit of company in that box for the Crystal Palace manager, Malcolm Allison. Longhorn. Clark. Moncur. Bolton. Space here for Moncur. A little chip through for Robson could be dangerous. This for Palace. Finney is right in there. Not brought down. No penalty, and the referee right again. Finney stumbled. Sure, there wasn't a push there, even though there was great danger for Palace. Good decision again by Clive Thomas. Playing it for, for Dick Malone. That's a nice looking cross coming in there. Holden is right in there too. Finney might get something here. Goal kick given. That was danger all the way there for Palace. Robson trying to get up to it. It finally fell for Finney. And it could well be that his shot just clipped the top of that Palace crossbar. Right on half time now. Robson with the throw for Sunderland. And indeed, there goes the half-time whistle, and for Palace, so far so good. They've had to take a lot of pressure, but they've taken it well. And just that one moment when Dennis Longhorn hit the crossbar was really the only time when they were deep in trouble. And so, Palace can go in at half-time, feeling that so far they've done a pretty good job and hoping that they can keep, uh, keep that up for another 45 minutes and then at least get Sunderland back to Selhurst Park for a replay. But of course, a lot of football to be played before that can happen. We leave you now for a short break, and after that break, with the half-time score here at Roker Park, Sunderland nil, Crystal Palace nil, we'll be right back with that second half.
23 second roll cue to TX coming up. So Palace get us away at the start of the second half. Attacking now the goal to our left. Their job half done. And the next 45 minutes absolutely crucial for them. Longhorn for Sunderland. And now Cannon making a great run. And a shot, in fact, that went under Montgomery's body. And he certainly didn't mean that to happen because it wasn't more than six inches wide. Great run there by Cannon, more of a toe poke than anything else, and Jim Montgomery a little fortunate to see that ball go outside. Robson, right deep there. Bolton, Clark. That toe was held up on the breeze and uh, did cause a bit of trouble there for Palace. It didn't really come to Wall as he'd hoped. Palace's throw. Hinchelwood. Jeffries again. Tony Towers. Wall is there. Little come for Finney. But Wall was on his feet again. My goodness, he's had a game. It's a long uh, clearance. But no good for Swindlehurst. Longhorn played to Malone. Kerr. Out of play. Linesman indicating that it's a throw to Palace. Linesman changed his mind there, but it's uh, Holder with the throw, and now Longhorn. Jeffries away again for Palace. Playing with a lot of discipline in defence this afternoon, Crystal Palace. Wall, back to Hammond. Clark. Longhorn playing it back to Clark. Well, Palace said they were coming here to attack. They've been denied the opportunity of doing much of that. It's been a really stern defensive battle for them so far. Jeffries going in again with a header. And here he is again. Holder. Jeffries. Again, a nice piece of advantage played. Here's Whittle. And there's a cross, and it's not a bad one. Moncur, though, in the middle for Sutherland. Holder finding Whittle again, who hadn't come back quickly enough. Offside. And the cry goes up for Billy Hughes, the Sunderland substitute. Oh, and Cannon got caught out there, but really tied up. Kerr. Wall again, landing it away. Malone, now it'll fall for Swindlehurst. And he's got Taylor in a nice position. Played there for Peter Taylor. Good pass. And there are four up now for Palace. Four back for Sunderland. Might be interesting. There's the little cross coming in. Just a little too high. Not really what Peter Taylor intended, I think. Go kick to Sunderland. Hasn't been very much attack from Palace. Uh, Swindlehurst has been the one lone regular striker. With Taylor and Whittle coming up from midfield to support him. And Chatterton on that occasion as well.
few Palace supporters here up in Sunderland uh, with the cry of Eagles coming up. Foul on uh, David Swindlehurst by Bobby Moncur, a free kick to Crystal Palace. Moncur quickly trying to organise something as Taylor takes that free kick and Evans goes in. Might have been very dangerous indeed, Evans uh, creeping up unbeknown to that Sunderland defence. Finally knocked away for the corner by Clark. So Whittle will take it. Taylor's on the goal line. Evans is in there too. Swindlehurst is a little bit deeper. And Evans with the header. Oh, and in the end, it was a question of whether Montgomery or Bolton finally got there to push it away. The feet were high, claims uh, Montgomery. But that really was a moment of trouble for Sunderland. And Swindlehurst was momentarily winded, but he's up on his feet again. Another corner for Palace. After so much defence, can they now come out and snatch something that's absolutely vital to them? Taylor with the corner. And Towers getting it high and clear and into touch. There's Billy Hughes. He hasn't played in the first team since he broke his leg at Charlton in November. Taylor, good ball there for Hinchelwood, and now for Chatterton, and now for Hinchelwood, good build up here by Crystal Palace, and again the ball going behind when it looked as though it might fall into the path of Chatterton, behind for a corner, but a nice precise build up there by Crystal Palace, with less than 20 minutes to go, it really is a test of nerve for them now, and a test of their discipline over the last 20 minutes, whether they can hold on to this nil-nil result. Taylor turning it in. Cannon right in there, but uh, Longhorn got his head to it first. Kerr. Cannon after him. Towers beaten to the ball by Wall. Can't remember seeing Peter Wall have a better game for Palace than he's had this afternoon. Now it's with Whittle. Still with Whittle, down he goes. But uh, a good fair challenge by Dick Malone. And a throw to Crystal Palace. And there's Stuart Jock. Longhorn. Malone. Towers. Now Kerr. Well, that ricocheted nicely there for Finney. Now for Kerr. Now wide for Towers. Problems here perhaps for Crystal Palace though. Cannon is there. Malone leaving it for Kerr. Towers. Free kick. Foul by Holder. A quarter of an hour to go now. Kerr now will take this kick. Is this going to be a problem for Crystal Palace? It's not because Hammond is there. And look at that for a good throw. Straight into the path of Peter Taylor. Whittle is up with him as well. Taylor taking on Bolton. Moncur getting in behind Bolton. And he needs to. He's going past Moncur as well. There's the cross coming in. Whittle a goal! Alan Whittle! Well, Palace have gone ahead with less than 15 minutes to go. Malcolm Allison was on his feet in the director's box. The whole bench were in the air as well. A tremendous run, starting with the throw from Paul Hammond. A run down that right touchline, past two defenders by Peter Taylor. The ball turned inside brilliantly by him. Whittle was there, able to turn into the roof of the net. No chance for Montgomery. Sunderland nil, Crystal Palace one. Scorer, Alan Whittle, and Billy Hughes now on. And Longhorn is the man who's gone off. Now, here's Towers. Now can Palace hold on, here's Hughes. It's a real gamble now for having Hughes on. He hasn't played a first-team game since November. Bonker. Holden. Holden again. T 
test of their nerve and their concentration now to hold what they've got Evans is there a good defensive header away again by him Whittle now turning it on for Taylor and away goes Peter Taylor chased by Bolton it's still with Taylor and still Taylor goes on past Clark a right foot shot oh and somehow Montgomery got there to push it over well, Kevin Keegan was saying at uh, lunchtime today, he's always regarded Taylor as a first division player. And that was first division quality, the way he took on his man and took him on again, unleashed a tremendous shot that called for a really excellent save from Montgomery. So, a corner to Crystal Palace. Curled in again there, Swindlehurst. Chatterton trying to turn it back again and just onto the roof of that netting. Goal kick. Hughes. Eight minutes left. Huge Roker crowd for the moment silenced by this Crystal Palace team that defended so well for so long in this game and then have come out and snatched such an important goal through Alan Whittle Kerr kept it in but only to the convenience of Jim Cannon Holder a throw again to Sunderland and Kerr with it and Palace were arguing and they should have been marking their men. Finney, Chatterton, now Taylor. Could be a few gaps here. No, he's all right, he's onside. Moncur played him onside. So Swindlehurst now, will this be number two? No, saved by Montgomery. But that surely is going to be the pattern over this uh, remaining seven or eight minutes where Sunderland have got to spring men forward, even at the risk of being caught at the back. Cannon, Kerr after him, tremendous little fighter, here's Kerr again, Holder couldn't get in there, Billy Hughes tackled by Wall, Holder the long ball, cleared there for Swindlehurst on the far side and hit first time and a goal kick again. Five minutes now to go. Five minutes that separate Crystal Palace at this moment from a place in the semi-finals of the Cup as a third division side. But now they've got their backs to the wall again as Clark brings it out. Here's Towers. And that wasn't a very good ball unless Hughes can get in behind him and Peter Wall was there before him and uh, even at the expense of a corner, the signal now for Palace to bring everybody back. Just as it's a signal for Sunderland again to push four men forward in the hope yet of snatching an equaliser. Towers with this corner for them. Hammonds, good catch. Look for a moment as though that had gone way over his head and behind him. with a header wall covering up again for Palace it could be dangerous to try and pass back Finney is at his heels and in the end he had to do what was safe he couldn't play it back to uh, Hammond because Holden was in the way another throw to Sunderland on my watch about 90 seconds to go alone heading that into the middle again Taylor couldn't get a header to the wall finally got it away Clark to Moncur. Holden. Flicked on again. Holden going after this one. Jeffries is there once again making the clearance for Crystal Palace. Towers 
taking a throw there for Sunderland. And again, Finney wasn't able to get it in because Hinchelwood was there. But again, in the last seconds of this game, it's another corner for Sunderland. And there won't be many more chances like this for them. There won't be many more moments for Crystal Palace to hold on to this precious one goal lead. But again, it's a little moment of crisis for them as this one curls in once more. The header from Monka, the shot, it back from Clark that cannoned off a Palace player and behind again for another corner. So another corner, Billy Kerr with it, Bobby Kerr with it rather. A deep one again, and again the header, and Hammond diving on it just before Finney gets in there and Finney has to be pulled away by Hinchelwood. And it's all over. Palace have done it. They are into the semi-finals of the Cup. After defending for so long and so well, they got the goal that mattered. Malcolm Allison with his hat has gone back down to the dressing room, no doubt, to get the champagne ready. And Sunderland, who played well and attacked well, and there's a lot of rejoicing going on amongst those Palace players on the field at the moment. Terry Venables going off the bench. Phil Holder full of smiles. There they are, mobbing. The number nine, Alan Whittle, the man who scored it. Paul Hammond, the goalkeeper, who was tremendous. Jim Cannon, defence as well. And Peter Wall going up the tunnel, maybe the best defender on the day for Crystal Palace. A marvellous result for them, taking this third division side as Alan Whittle applauds the uh, Palace supporters who are here. A marvellous day then for Crystal Palace, the third division side going into the semi-final of the FA Cup. Final scoreline at Roker Park, Sunderland nil. Crystal Palace won.